Hello everyone and welcome, I am FLC and we are counting down the top four teams in the Transatlantic Splatoon League Season 2 Playoffs. We're up to our number one seed from Europe, Freeze. So, this uh, set from Freeze against Rift was a 5-1. So, I just want to emphasize before we get into this, Freeze were way better than everyone else in Europe um, in the group stage. They only lost three games in the entire in the entire thing, and so pretty much whatever we look at, it's going to look good for Freeze. That having been said, there is one thing that underpins everything that Freeze does, and that is their fundamental individual skill, especially in the front three players. So that is Free, Noctis, and Mika. We're actually going to see a very subtle thing in this first fight. It's going to look really mundane, um, but this is actually rule number one. For how Freeze plays. I'm just going to show it to you. We're going to look at Urza and we're going to look at Free. Free is in, tucked in under here, right? So we're just going to watch this for a brief little moment. And okay, cool, excellent. So that's how Freeze wins. Now, um, I'm going to be a little bit more descriptive about this now. So, all right, at this point, the first thing to realize here is that Free is not actually trying to do anything. And so a lot of players sort of have this idea in their heads that they have to constantly be doing things, you know. Um, a lot of top players don't have that problem, and this is sort of what that looks like. In not doing something, Free is actually doing something, which is playing counter-aggression. Which is to say, when someone... Uh, when he sees someone from the enemy team actually make a play, he's going to be the one who goes and cleans that up. Alright? Now, what I, I said rule number one. Rule number one for Freeze goes something like this which is when you're the front when you're one of the front three you pretty much only shoot people who cannot shoot you back or are not shooting you back all right and we're going to see that right here up to this point freeze uh free doesn't even know where urza is right uh, right now until about here okay so for urza's just shown himself and now free goes over to, to clean him up now two really important things to notice here firstly when urza is trying to shoot at zeraz here think about it this way for Urza to have enough time to stand there and shoot Zeraz, he is also giving his opponent enough time to shoot him with a similar amount of shots, right? So every time in this game that you uh, stand uh, stand still because you basically have to stand up, get out of ink, stop moving properly uh, to, to, get, to get a spot on someone, you are giving the enemy a brief, like a sub-second window to actually take you out, right? And this is what Freeze plays on. So notice here, Urza is shooting at Zeraz, which means that when Free comes in, Urza's actually standing still, which means that this is a really, really quick splat. Not only that, but watch how Free just takes a quick step to the left here as he's fighting. So he gets the shots on Urza, and then he takes a quick step to the left as he gets the splat on Urza, okay? This is also another really important but subtle thing, which is that Free right here did not move after getting the splat. He moved after shooting enough shots to get the splat, which means that he was already moving before it was even possible for Urza to have reacted. Okay? So it's not about, like, having insane reactions. It's about just moving in a way that prevents any kind of craziness from ever happening in the first place. These are two very subtle things that I pretty much have to sit here with a pause video in order to show you guys. Um, but these small things are so central to the way Freeze plays that overall this means that Freeze's players, especially their front three, will stay alive a hell of a lot longer than everyone else on, on their opponent's teams, and they will also get easier picks as well, right? Free didn't have to work for this pick on Urza. He just walked up and, and shot him three times. It was the easiest thing he's ever done. Um, whereas a lot of players will like try to fight like heads up, right? They'll, they'll sort of try to fight Urza heads up and uh, you know, they'll have to dodge the shots and like get these hard shots on a moving target. No, Freeze doesn't do any of that. What this means is that Freeze is really, really hard to pin down. Except when they do things like this and, and Free gets himself kind of caught out. That's the exception rather than the rule. We're going to look again at what Mika does here um, as, a, as another example of that. So, 
this kind of really small movement, this efficient movement, is what makes Freeze tick. And this, what, Urza, what Mika does here, is also really, really crucial, which is the, sort of the defensive side of this. Which is, whenever a Freeze player is in danger, um, they are going to immediately retreat, but stay as close as possible to the fight, right? Without, without compromising their safety. So if rule one is that you only ever shoot at people who can't shoot you back, rule two is that when you retreat, if you ever get shot at, you retreat just enough to, uh, to drop aggro and then you just stop, which is what Mika does here, right? This has the uh, added benefit of when the enemy team is trying to sort of shoot at you and you retreat, if you go, like, it, let's say Mika goes all the way back to here, all of this is wasted. Like, this is all wasted movement going all the way back here, right? So, if Mika is able to lose aggro here and stop moving here, then that means that if he wants to go back in, he's already really close. He doesn't have to move all the way back in again, right? So, if he has to move all the way back out here to escape, and then he has to move all the way back in when he, when he realizes the enemy team isn't chasing him anymore, this two-way trip is wasted movement. We don't want that, right? And Mika, as well as as well as well uh, Noctis and uh, Free, all do this really, really well. Which means that Mika is in prime position to just immediately get on top of the Rainmaker as soon as it's picked up. Now, this is a bit of a risky uh, pickoff right here, but the only reason that Mika even gets spotted right here is because Skoze uses an inkjet to take him down. If they had to use their, like, their, just their main weapons to deal with Mika right there, they would have spent forever trying to get fall off on this guy, they would have to use, throw burst bombs and all that sort of stuff. Meanwhile, look who's here! It's Zeraz, and he is right in position to start taking pot shots at anyone who's standing still long enough to try and fall off, uh, do fall off damage to Mika, uh, to take him out. And that's Freeze. That is their playstyle. They are very, very good at finding these small openings to take people out. And then they're also very good at moving away just enough to keep themselves relevant to, to fights. Which means that when you fight Freeze, they are constantly baiting you. They are constantly saying, hey, hey, we're giving you a fight. You want to take this fight, right? Fights are fun. Let's just, let's all fight Freeze. And then, oops, that was a trap. Guess what? We weren't actually vulnerable there. And uh, we're just going to, we're just going to take your base now. I hope you don't mind. That's Freeze. And I, I'm, I'm sort of playing up the fact they're a little bit clowny because I actually think that's how they talk to each other in the comms is rather than saying, there's a guy on the left, let's go shoot him. It's more like, there's a guy on the left, what the hell is he doing? Um, and then it's sort of, uh, it, it sort of progresses from there. I get the distinct impression watching Freeze that they aren't so much convinced of their superiority as they are convinced that the enemy team has no idea what they're doing and is just going to basically throw as long as all everyone on Freeze stays alive long enough to make that happen. Or to let that happen, I should say. So, we're basically going to let this play out a little bit here. Like, we can sort of see, like... As we as we do this, just watch how you know free freeze isn't um, you know over overstaying their welcome here. They get their push, and then the players who are left are just like, no, nah, okay, that's fine. That's you know, that's perfectly reasonable. We'll, we'll get another one. The enemy team's bad enough to let that happen, right? Um, meanwhile, free like free is in this sort of weird position up here, like where people might be thinking, oh, he's he's sort of in the middle of nowhere here, isn't he? Well, no. Um, what he was doing here, if I'll, I'll just back up so we can see it a little bit, uh, a little bit closer. What Free is doing here is he's basically just using the fact that this whole area, as long as he stays here, the enemy team has to come back and deal with him at some point, or they have to at least think about him. They have to keep Free in the back of their minds, which means that if they ever slip up, then Free is free to do things like what he's about to do over here. So where Mika. Uh, Mika gets taken out and Free comes in to, to help clean up, right? And he's a little bit slow to be fair, um, but the fact that Noctis is here and the fact that this was basically a 3v... excuse me, 3v2, um, means that Free is... like, he's been up here for so long now that the enemy team can't possibly be thinking too hard about what, uh, what he was doing before, and they're just interested in running away, which means he's now got the opportunity to, to run back in. 
all of this stuff that I'm talking about, by the way, is not like, it's not as though Freeze is coordinating this stuff. It, they will coordinate picks, by all means. They will say things like, what is this guy doing um, when someone finally does overextend from the enemy team? But all of these overextensions and these bait plays are all individual. They are all things that basically Freeze's, Freeze's front three are ad-libbing um, whenever they, uh, at all times during the game. So there are always opportunities for Freeze to make these kinds of plays happen because all three of their front three are so slippery and so hard to deal with that it's inevitable that the enemy team is going to um, give them the overextension that they're looking for. We see here Noctis doing sort of a bit of a Noctis move where he's just like, oh, hey, I'm on the flank, I can do this, and he just goes in and kind of 1v4s the enemy team. Um, Noctis does that. Uh, we we sort of just have to learn to live with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, from this point forwards, you can sort of see how Rift is constantly in a state of anxiety. Like, you could, you could practically see how all four of them are just constantly trying to do as much as they possibly can at all times. Um, because they're, they're so like, we've got to win this, we've got to win this, guys. Whereas Freeze is just like, they're so confident that they're going to win, that they don't even let those sort of things get to them. Um, they're always just playing, oh yeah, nah, what, uh, well, whatever, we lost the, we, we lost this push, that's okay. Um, we got a decent amount of points out of it, we'll just get another push. Easy, easy, you know? Um, that having been said, this, I'm, Freeze typically was not always like this. I should mention this. Freeze, for the longest time, was a bit of an emotional team. And I, I would still say that they are. I think it's just that um, against European, the European teams, I think they were just never challenged. And this is the thing that I'm sort of interested in, in the playoffs especially, is will Freeze be challenged by North America? And if they are, will that affect their ability to play like this? Because playing like this, like I said, it's as though Freeze is just convinced that the enemy team is bad and will screw up. But what happens when they play against a half-decent team who is not going to make those kinds of errors? What, what happens when they play against FT Win and Starburst and they are not given these opportunities and they have to actually make them themselves? We've already seen how FT Win does, uh, handles this kind of thing where they're really good at closing the gap on enemy teams through uh, a combination of rotations and um, uh, efficient special usage. Freeze, though, has never really had to do that. They've always been given the opportunities that they're looking for, and they've always been so patient uh, in their play that it's never really come up, right? It's never really been something they've, have to, they've had to worry about too much. We're going to move on now to the TC Manta Maria game. This was a game where, for the most part, Rift was actually uh, on the offense, right? They actually got a really solid push early on. And I want to look at this game because this is something where the only real challenge um, that Freeze really faced through the group stage was actually from the maps they played on rather than the teams they were playing against. And this is a perfect example. The maps where R Freeze tended not to do so well are the maps where that sort of uh, organic kind of defensive play where Freeze is moving just barely far enough away to um, to keep themselves alive doesn't work out so well because of the way the map is laid out. We're going to see that a little bit um, later on, but for now, just consider the fact that there's all these walls, right, that, that are really hard to scale or outright unscalable, that where if Freeze finds themselves up against this wall, they're going to have to uh, back up uh, a different way, right? Like, if, if, if you're here and you want to retreat, you have to go, like, out and like this, as opposed to just going backwards, right? Whereas Freeze is usually a team where they're kind of just going forwards and going backwards, going forwards and going backwards, going forwards and going backwards, right? And when that kind of natural flow is disrupted because going forwards means going off a ledge that you can't go backwards onto, um, this is something where Freeze typically struggles. Wahoo World Splat Zones, I think was the... M I think they actually... Two of their three losses were on Wahoo World Splat Zones. And some of the dicier games that they had were on maps like Muscle Forge, uh, Muscle Forge Fitness, which also has this property of there is this giant wall that you can't retreat to. So if you get stuck there, and Freeze quite often did, then you can give the enemy team the uh, fight that they're looking for. For now, though, um, this push kind of... Uh, is 
another instance of like freeze not really having as much uh, power on their pushes when the enemy team doesn't give them the fights that they're looking for, right? They kind of if we if we just kind of watch Noctis, Noctis is the only one really trying to push. Like free does activate an inkjet, but it's more of a an it's more of an inkjet in response to Urza coming up the stairs. And as soon as uh, as soon as Urza doesn't get taken out by this first inkjet shot and is able to survive, Free's inkjet basically amounts to not very much at all. And meanwhile, Noctis has been taken out up top, and Rift is able to surround and take out the tower. Um, this is something again that Freeze is l struggles a little bit with. Is it's not so much that they can't make pushes; it's just that they're usually used to um, the enemy team giving them free pushes. That sometimes when they have to engineer a push of their own, uh, it can get a little bit difficult for them. This is a this is sort of a, a a rare misstep I think from Freeze. Is this little fight going on down here? This is you, this you would expect the roles to be reversed here, basically. Where Skoze is in a position, you might not be able to see it if you're a little bit unfamiliar with the map, but there's a little block here. Um, it's the mirror reverse of this one up here. There's a little block here that you can sort of sit behind over here um, to be safe from people up here, and this is what Skoze does. And Mika tries to actually fight Skoze while he's in this little corner with a end zap. I, you can't do this. Uh, to, to put it simply. And you can sort of see Mika ends up in this awkward fight where he can't really do anything. Um, but he's done that to himself. And Skoze is able to really easily... Uh, well, he, he does use an inkjet to be fair. But then that kind of results in Mika being like, oh, hang on, I can't retreat anymore. Right? And this is what I'm talking about, where when Mika goes in here, he has no retreat options. He could go this way if he so chose, but the uh, inkjet was cutting him off there, which means that now, okay, he's gone in, which means to get out he needs to either go through an inkjet and get splattered, or go through here and get splattered, which is what he ends up doing. Um... Not great. This, these are the problems that Freeze run in, runs into, where they kind of, they are ahead of the curve on these kinds of things. They're not reacting to things like this. They're actually thinking, oh, I should probably retreat now, and then they try to retreat. But then when they can't retreat because the map doesn't let them, they get a bit stuck. Uh, Free is in the same situation here. We see Free is kind of trying to run in here to uh, assist Mika, and he commits, he commits off this ledge to do so. But then, oh, oops, I can't go backwards, so I have to go around. And you can see he very nearly gets taken out here by Urza. Uh, if Urza was even slightly faster, Free would have gone down for sure here. Um, because the only thing that stopped that let Free get out there was basically that his feet never got painted, which if they did, he was done. Um, so, this is where Free's kind of, they don't fall apart, they just have a little, uh, some struggles, right? And in this case, they're also fighting against Rift, who are extremely good at pushing, so... Um, and again, we see a little bit more of the same here, where Noctis goes in and gets caught by Zekin. To be fair, he probably shouldn't have gone in here, but... Um, gets caught by Zekin, and he has nowhere to go. And Zekin is able to clean up. Meanwhile, Mika gets taken out by, basically, Alexei being surprisingly good with the C-Jet. And by surprisingly good, I mean, when you see a C-Jet as a good player, you usually look at the C-Jet and say, this thing can't hit, can't do anything to me, because it's a C-Jet, doesn't do any damage. But then Alexei actually hits all four shots, all four of his first four shots, um, on Mika, which means that he gets a very quick splat that Mika was probably not expecting here. Um, we see that right there. So this kind of... Basically, in order to beat Freeze, the map is a big help, but the other thing um, that Freeze would struggle with, I suspect, is being kind of baited by their own... Uh, by their own tricks, right? Where... Rift, I think, plays very straightforward. If they're running forwards, it's because they're going to shoot at you. They are not being sneaky, they're not being slippery, they're not being slimy. They're just being straightforward. They're, if they are running forwards, they're going to fight you. If they're running away, it's because they're retreating. There are no fakes, there are no, um, there are no tricks, there's no nothing. Whereas I think Freeze would, is best uh, handled in that kind of manner. Now we're going to see, um, and this is sort of an example of that, where Urza is specifically looking for this shark here, as opposed to, um, 
as opposed to like just taking the fight straight up because he just thinks that he's going to out outfight Noctis. And you can see Freeze, they can't uh, they can't be slippery and draw aggro if they don't know that you're there, right? And this is an example of that right there. Of course, Elsa does get taken out, but then um, Zekin's on top of Zeraz, and it's it gets pretty dicey for, for Freeze in that situation. That having been said, because everyone on Freeze, including Zeraz, is very slippery, even though Zekin is on top of Zeraz here, and it looks awful, uh, it looks awkward, they're able to s sort of survive long enough to get, um, to turn the tables. Another thing that happens here is, so what we're going to see here is Free is going to take a couple of shots at Alexei, and then he's going to go up this wall. So he's going to actually disengage from, from Alexei and go up the wall to, to deal with Skoze. No doubt, uh, no doubt Mika is currently saying to him that, uh, Skoze, like, what is Skoze doing? Um... And so, okay, he does get taken out by Skoze here, but the point here is that a lot of the time when you see someone, like, try to fight a, uh, especially an anchor weapon, they will actually commit forward for that fight. Like, they'll try to stay in that fight and keep that fight going. We saw this in the very first, uh, play that we, t we took a look at at the start of the video when Urza was committing to try and take out Zeraz. Disengaging from those kinds of fights is also really important, and we see that Free, we actually see Free do that fairly consistently. And that's just an example of where that happens. And the only reason he gets taken out by Skoze here is because he thinks that Skoze is fighting Mika, and then Skoze turns around and fights him instead. Which, again, this kind of highlights how Freeze is vulnerable to being sort of having the, having the tricks that are thrown back their way. It's just that not, that never really happened in the European group stage. So we'll have to uh, see if the North Americans are up to the challenge. So here we see a situation where Freeze's push has actually sort of stalled and they've kind of lost momentum. But you see that nobody on Freeze is really trying to make anything happen. They're just making, uh, they're just taking advantage of the fact that um, Rift has to kind of come in and fight them. And then it makes it, it makes the cleanup take a long, long time. The only reason this could have actually uh, flipped, uh, but again Urza is on sharking duty and takes out Mika where Mika doesn't realize that Urza can be there. Mika is sort of expecting that Urza is going to be uh, taken in by the by the bait on Noctis um, and Urza to his credit is not and is able to set up this next push as a result of that. So, effectively what I'm saying here is that Freeze is very, very difficult to deal with, but they they are not invincible. And they, they will sometimes get themselves into situations that are a little bit awkward to deal with, and because they're, they're a little bit less... Um, a, they're not quite as good at engineering their own pushes, they're usually relying on pickoffs instead of uh, instead of actually set like having set plays with a whole bunch of specials or whatever, and you can sort of see that in this game. Like the the two pushes that Freeze uh, attempted, both sort of sputtered out at about 50 points because they just ran out of resources. That having been said, they do win this game, and this is the push that does it. We see a little bit of the usual sort of um, sneaky kind of play with uh, with Maker and Free on the bunker. They get in, they get the pick, they move away. Um, they're allowing the enemy team to uh, over to overextend. Then we see Free here, again disengaging from the CGS as soon as he realizes there's a better target nearby, and then putting himself in a really strong position where Urza can't really afford to fight him, which then allows for um, Freeze to bait the tower. They basically expect that. Uh, Urza is going to go straight for the tower to try and clear it as soon as possible, and they just get off the tower, and they just let him come. And then they surround him from uh, both sides, and he's a free splat. And then Free, meanwhile, is in the enemy team's base, just uh, cleaning up everyone else who's still trying to run into the tower. And that's the lead, and that's the game. So, this is Freeze. Um, Freeze is a very sneaky, very... Um, very clowny almost team who are absolutely looking to make the enemy team make mistakes um, and they're absolutely looking to bait the enemy team into taking plays that they can't afford to take we'll have to see how they uh, how they go up against FT win in the semi-finals 
And meanwhile, on the other side of the bracket, we've got uh, we've got Starburst. So Starburst is going to be the final team that we take a look at, and that's going to be happening tomorrow with the actual playoffs taking place on the 9th. So only two days away now. For now, though, that's all, and I'll see you next time.